So today we are going to discuss the results of your lab, the little simulation lab you did a couple days ago, or yesterday I guess. And we're going to try to relate that then to the properties of a capacitor and come up with a formula for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. Uh, first let's take a look at, I did the same lab, let's take a look at my results. You can compare yours to these. Here is a graph of the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor versus the separation of the two plates. And you can see it has some kind of inverse shape. It starts up here, comes out like that. Uh, you could try to graph it as inverse square, but I think we should just try to graph it as inverse first. And so I made a column of one over the plate separation, one over distance. And let me show you what a graph then will look like of capacitance versus one over the distance. So this is capacitance. This is one over the distance. And I'm going to auto scale that and make it a little bit bigger perhaps. And you can see it looks fairly linear. Let's go ahead and do a linear fit. And you can see that it looks very linear. The correlation is 0.9895. And so apparently, the relationship between the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor and the plate separation is that the capacitance is proportional to 1 over the plate separation. That capacitance proportional to 1 over D. Now let's make another graph. This is the result I got. Um, when I measured the area of the two plates and kept the plate separation constant. That looks like this. This appears to be linear already. In fact, if we do a linear fit to it, we get that the uh, correlation is even closer, 0 0.9998. And so we see that the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is proportional to the area as well. Now let's see if we can figure out why this makes sense for this to be true. So in order to understand the formulas for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor, we're going to borrow a formula that we actually derive in AP Physics C. So if you are planning on taking that course next year, you're going to see exactly where this formula comes from. And that formula is the formula for the electric field between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor. Now, we're not going to derive this formula here, but I am going to show you how it's compatible with those two equations that you came up with yesterday. The formula says that the electric field in between the plates of a large parallel plate capacitor, that is to say, the plates have a large area in comparison to the distance between them, is a constant. And it is given by the charge on one plate divided by this constant epsilon naught, which is the permittivity of free space. We saw that constant when we discussed Coulomb's law and the alternate way of stating Coulomb's constant, and then divided by the area. So essentially what it's saying is that the electric field is proportional to the charge per unit area on one of the plates of your parallel plate capacitor. Well, if that's the electric field, then what would the potential be between the two plates? Well, the potential difference is just the electric field times the distance over which the charges are moving through that electric field. So the potential difference is just the electric field times D. In that case, then, you would take the charge divided by the area and epsilon naught times D, and that is going to be your potential difference. Well, let's rearrange all those terms and see what we end up with. Uh, we have that the potential difference is equal to D over epsilon naught times A times the charge. And so if we solve this for the ratio of the charge to the potential difference, we would get 
you bring the epsilon naught a over to the other side and put it in the numerator and put the distance in the denominator and that is going to be equal to the charge on one of the plates divided by the potential difference between the plates. But that is just your capacitance. And so what this equation is telling us that if that equation which we borrowed from physics C is correct and that the electric field is just the charge per unit area divided by epsilon naught, then the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor only depends on the area of the capacitor's capacitor plates and the separation between the plates and then a constant, which is called the permittivity of free space. So this is our formula then for the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor. And you will see that it agrees with your formulas from yesterday. The bigger the area, the bigger the capacitance, and the bigger the distance between the two plates, the smaller the capacitance, and those are both proportionalities. There's one more thing we can do to change the capacitance of our parallel plate capacitor. We can put in a substance in between the two plates that's different from just air uh, or just empty space. That's things called a dielectric. Now it can't be a conductor. A dielectric is a non-conductor. If it was a conductor, you wouldn't have a capacitor anymore. The two plates would be touching each other. They'd be conducting electricity between them. So you put a non-conductor in between the plates of the capacitor and you'll see that's going to change the capacitance. I have a little video pre-recorded just showing you what happens when you put a dielectric in between the uh, plates of a capacitor. And so we'll let you watch that first and then we'll come back and talk about why that happens. So here we have a parallel plate capacitor and I have just used clips to hold the probes from my multimeter onto the plates. Now, right now, there is nothing in between the plates of the parallel plate capacitor except for air. However, if I put some paper in there, we can see it changes the capacitance slightly, but not very much. But it does increase it a little bit. However, if I take some paper that has been saturated with oil, and place that between the plates of my parallel plate capacitor. Be careful not to let the plates get any farther apart than they already are. Now you see the capacitance increases by a considerable amount. So let's see if we can understand why the insertion of a dielectric increased the capacitance of our capacitor. Here I have a representation of a capacitor. You have a plus charge on one side, minus charge on the other plate, and the electric field going in between the plus charge and the minus charge. Now, we insert a dielectric material in there. The dielectric material doesn't have to be polar, but when you insert a non-conductor in between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor, charge plates of a parallel plate capacitor, the molecules become polar. There's a slight distortion of their shape. Now, the charges are not free to move in a non-conductor. However, the electron clouds can change their shape slightly because the electrons are attracted to the positive plate of the parallel plate capacitor leaving behind the uh, charged nuclei which are attracted to the negative plate of the parallel plate capacitor. So the molecules don't move but they can change their shape and when they do so uh, they become polar. So what does that mean? Well, uh, let's look at what this means if you have a polar molecule. Uh, the molecule now has a, a negative side because the Electrons are being attracted over here, and a positive side because 
uh, the positive charges remain in place, uh, which means that every molecule now has an electric field that goes from positive to negative. So it goes this way. There are electric fields in my molecule that point to the right in my diagram here. So those electric fields reduce, because they're acting in the opposite direction as, the electric fields from the external charges. Which means that the net electric field inside of my dielectric is less. So I've reduced the electric field. And if you've reduced the electric field, uh, then you have actually increased the capacitance. There is another way to look at this, by the way. Uh, it's completely equivalent. Uh, it just uh, depends on the application you're trying to do. Um, you can think of what's going on in here as when this electron, this uh, molecule gets distended, this electron is close to the positive charge of this molecule, and this electron is close to the positive charge of that molecule, and so forth. And so inside of here, all the molecules end up being electrically neutral. I mean, the total charge inside of here is, is still uncharged, it's still electrically neutral, except on the ends. Like the very surface here, this positive charge is not paired with a negative charge right next to it. And this negative charge over here is not paired with the positive charge next to it. So what you can end up happening is you can, you can interpret this as saying you get a surface charge forming. The external electric field causes a surface charge to form on my dielectric. And if there's a surface charge, well that means these electric fields stop when they encounter the charge. They go from plus charge to minus charge and they stop there. So some of the electric field is stopped at the surface of my dielectric. That's one way to think of it. I think the idea of a polarization electric field is a, a better way to think of it. Um, but sometimes you might encounter this explanation as well. It's not necessarily wrong, it's just I, I think this one is, is more uh, useful because we can use it in um, later ideas. Okay, so let's look at what happens to our capacitance then if our electric field is reduced. Remember, um, the electric field, um, the way we, we show how it's been, been reduced is we put, a, we put a constant in there called the dielectric constant. It shows up in the denominator of our formula for the electric field inside of our dielectric. The original formula for the electric field was... was Q over epsilon naught times A. Putting this number here, which is bigger than 1 for a dielectric, uh, reduces the electric field inside of our dielectric. Because you got in the denominator, so it's bigger than 1, so it's going to make this smaller than it would normally be. Uh, now, how does that affect the, the capacitance? Remember how we got the formula for capacitance. We said that the potential difference was the electric field times the plate separation. So that gave you your potential difference. And then if you solve this formula for Q divided by the potential difference, uh, what you're left behind is your capacitance. Potent charge divided by the potential difference is your capacitance. So if you solve it for that, what you end up with is kappa ends up being in the numerator of the formula for the capacitance now. So kappa is a number bigger than 1. That's, that's the Greek letter kappa, by the way. It kind of looks like a K, but it's Greek letter kappa. A number bigger than 1 times the original formula for the capacitance means that when you put a dielectric in, your capacitance has increased. Basically, the idea is that you can have, you can have uh, less potential difference for the same amount of charge because your electric field is less. By the way, there is another way uh, to say the formula. Uh, some textbooks refer not to uh, they refer not to epsilon naught, but they refer to epsilon in the formula for a capacitor with uh, a dielectric inserted. They say the formula is the capacitance is equal to epsilon times a 
over D. And what epsilon is, it's kappa times epsilon naught. If you want, why well, I call this epsilon naught, and it's called the permittivity of free space. This thing is just called the permittivity then. So the permittivity of free space, when there's no dielectric, multiplied by kappa gives you the permittivity when there is a dielectric. And so that's a permittivity you use down here. Um, I think in your formula chart, though, it uses this formula that we had just showed a moment ago, which is capacitance is equal to kappa times epsilon naught times A over D. That explicitly shows you what happens. As long as you remember that a dielectric has a kappa bigger than 1, you'll remember that the capacitance increases when you put that dielectric in. Now let's talk about some of the problems you're going to get. I'm going to give you a little quiz to work on uh, to uh, make these ideas um, firmly gelled in your brains, so to speak. But let's talk about how you're going to approach these problems. And some of the problems, they're going to change the capacitance somehow. They're going to say that the distance between the places increased, or the area has changed, or the dielectric con there's a dielectric inserted or a dielectric taken away. And, and what change does that have on uh, what's going on with your capacitor? Remember uh, what we said, uh, if you have a battery hooked up to your capacitor and you leave it hooked up, the potential difference doesn't change. So when you make whatever changes you make to your capacitor, uh, the charge will have to change. Because the capacitance changes and the potential difference stays the same, the charge on each plate is going to have to change. On the other hand, if you disconnect your battery, then if you make any changes, well, you've disconnected it, the charges have no place to go, so the charges are stuck, so therefore the potential difference will have to change. So that's the kind of difference you're going to have to look for, look, read the question carefully, and if it says that the battery was disconnected, or that the capacitor was isolated, another way of saying the same thing, um, then you know that the charges stay the same. If on the other hand it says the battery is left in place, uh, then you know that it's a potential difference that stays the same. Uh, so work on the quiz questions, or just a few of them, and then Next thing we will discuss is energy storage in capacitors.